Hey, 3DFers, welcome to your ambient occlusion uh, video. I just wanted to show you uh, how to create the ambient occlusion for your jar. And uh, if you look at my jar, you know, all the things that we talk about that are important when it comes to UV mapping and good quality UV layout, that's what's going to yield a good AO pass uh, texture generation. So the things we're looking for with UV mapping, happy squares, check. All of my shells inside this zero to one space, check. UV shells not overlapping each other, check. UVs all facing blue, the correct direction, check. I've obviously done all of those things, so I have a good UV layout. This is going to yield a good ambient occlusion. If you're missing one of those things, that's gonna cause a problem. All right, so let's look into the rendering. Now, rendering is a process of creating an image, and we're going to be using the Arnold rendering engine to do this. Uh, you'll see I have Arnold on my menu set here, and you probably don't see it there, because by default it's not loaded. So we have to load it. Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. When you go here, it will launch this window here, and there's a whole bunch of plugins in here, and you can see they're not all turned on. We're going to scroll down until we get to the one called mtoa.bundle, and that's the Maya 2 Arnold bundle. So you just have to check on loaded and hit refresh, and then you're good to go. And then you should see Arnold up here. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, we're going to open up a render viewer, which will allow us to see. Uh, what the uh, jar will look like with the shadow information on it. But first, we have to create a new material and apply it to this object. Um, and again, you have to have Arnold loaded first in order to do this because we're using special Arnold materials. And just like photographic paper is used to capture highlight and shadow information and it creates an image, well, this is like a special material that captures light and shadow information and records it onto your UV layout. So uh, what we want to do is capture the shadow information by making this jar out of this special material like photographic paper, uh, photographic clay, I guess, in this case, to remember where the shadows go. So first we're going to go to the hypershade, because you know that's where we go for materials, window. Rendering editors, hypershade. And since we have created or uh, set up the Arnold renderer, we now have access to its special materials. And down here at the bottom, shader leads us to a tab which shows us the ambient occlusion material. And this is that special material that captures light information. So that's what we're going to use. And uh, I'm going to apply it to my jar. So now my jar is made of this special light receiving material and now I can actually see the result of the ambient occlusion creation. And again, you can see there's some shadow in here, but watch what happens when I render this. So to see what it would look like, I'm gonna to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Render View. And basically this opens up a view of what a render of this object will look like, the final image. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just scoot the jar over this way a tiny bit, and uh, I'm going to render this image out. And you'll see this is the jar, and you can see that really cool shadow information. And uh, what we're going to do again is make a texture and sort of record that information. Shadow should be here and here on the jar permanently. And it will look pretty cool. Well, not permanently. It'll create a texture that will allow it to be applied here, just like we put the checker on there. So, but that's roughly what it'll look like, but we want to save it so that we don't have to render it to see that, but it's actually on there all the time. And it's a great way to show off details on your model. So it looks really neat. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's, that's our goal is to capture that information. So what we're going to do is select the jar, go to Arnold. And again, you have to have loaded it in order, uh, loaded the Arnold rendering engine in order to see that up there. And then I'm going to go to the utilities and I'm going to do render selection to texture. And what we're doing is we're telling Maya and Arnold, the object that I have selected, create a, uh, a texture for it using you know, the ability to record light and shadow information. Big ticket item. 
if you are creating an AO pass for an object that has many pieces to it, select all of the pieces and under mesh combine them. That way it will generate a single texture. If you have a bunch of pieces, it will create a texture for each one, which is not necessarily bad, but it's easier for us because uh, we're just learning to have well, a single texture. So we're going to go to mesh combine if it is an object made of many pieces. Luckily, this is made of one piece, so pretty straightforward. Arnold, Utilities, Render to Texture. And this little window opens up, and it's like, well, where do you want it to go? And I'm going to tell it, uh, go to, it's actually, it's already going to my um, skill check folder because I set my project like a good little modeler. Uh, but I want to tell it specifically, please send it to my source images folder because just like image planes uh, have to be in the source images folder in order for your material to be able to find it and apply it to your object, uh, by default, textures go there too. So I wanted to go to my source images folder and I hit select. So that's where it's going. And um, I'm going to up the resolution to 1024, good high resolution because that's going to uh, give me a better quality image. And uh, this is where I go to render. And I click this little button here. And you can see it's doing its job, working, 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 working. All right, so it's done. And again, you can see it's a pretty fast process. So now when I go to my um, skill check files, I go to my source images folder. I see my um, ambient occlusion image has been created here. And um, in terms of uh, applying it, all I have to do is feed it into the color channel, just like I did with my checker box. But I know it's, it, I know it's right here in my source images folder. And I've set my project, so Maya's going to help me out on that end. So now, again, I've got to go back to the Hypershade, Rendering Editor's Hypershade. And there we go. And I'm going to make another material. But I, again, I want to stick with the just regular old Lamberts because that's what we use. And uh, this Lambert, I'm going to give it a, a name because we always name our materials. I'm going to call it Jar Material. So now it's got a material for it. Uh, again, the color channel, we go to the end. And this is just like when I apply a checker pattern. Same deal. Click on the checkbox opens up the create render node, I click on file. It doesn't know what it's made of yet because I have to tell it what it's made of. And again, it's that nice jar texture that I created. So I click on this icon here, select the uh, jar shape EXR, the file type will be an EXR. And incidentally, you have to turn this in when you turn in any object to me that has an AO pass on it. Because if I don't have this texture, I can't apply it. So make sure that travels with the file. Uh, also, when you're um, bringing all of your assets into your final scene file, when you're importing everything, make sure to bring their AO passes with them and put them into the source images folder of the master file. That way, all of your assets that you want to can have an AO pass. So I select the uh, EXR file, which is my ambient occlusion, and I hit open. So now it knows um, what it's made of. It, it's found the picture. So now all I have to do is apply the material. So again, this is something we've done many, many times. You're wondering why do we do some of these assignments? Well, because they lead to each other. So now I need to make this jar made out of this uh, material. So I drag it with the middle mouse button and drop it on there. Now, many times when you do this, you go, wait a minute, look, there's, it looks kind of like I can see through it a little bit. It looks like it's a little bit transparent or something, and that's actually what is going on there. So we can fix this actually super easy. And uh, what we'll do is if we select the object, and actually we can even just open the hypershade uh, again and go to it that way, just because it's a little bit more straightforward. Here's my material. And if I double click on it, it loads it into the attribute editor. You'll note I'm not using the material editor in the hypershade. That thing is naughty. I'm using the attribute editor. 
And you'll see, there's my color, that's my picture being plugged in, and right below it, oh, on the transparency channel, something's being plugged in there too. And that's what's leading to the transparency of my image. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is come over to the word transparency, hold down the right mouse button, and choose break connection. And when I do that, that connection is broken. I don't have that transparency thing anymore. And then to rim to ra, look at that. I've got my ambient occlusion on there. And it looks great. See that nice shadowing on there? Um, another name for the ambient occlusion pass is called the dirt pass or the spec pass because it kind of makes it look a little bit dirty, you know? And that's the reality of our world. Things are a little bit dirty. And it looks cool with that on there. Again, if you look at it without and with, you know, that's much better. And we're just talking about a jar here. Imagine something with some really awesome detail. Now, one thing you may notice is, oh, whoa, I got this, what the heck is that? And what that is, is the texture scene. That's where your texture, that's where your UV shell stops. But the good news is, like everything else, we can fix that too. So I'm gonna go to my uh, UV editor. And uh, what you'll see is when you go to the UV editor, at the edge of your shell, it just drops off to nothing. And that's what's creating that dark area there, this dark area here. So what I'm going to do is grab my UV shell. Just grab this edge here. Grab the whole thing. And what I'm going to do is using my move tool, I'm just, I'm just going to tuck it in. Oop, it went on that side too. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to grab this. And then, actually, you know what? The problem I'm running into is if I grab the edge, it grabs the edge over there. So what I'm going to do instead, actually, you know what? I'll just use the scale tool. Sorry. <laughs> I'll grab it all the way down. You want to do it that way, Maya? I will work with you. And what I'm going to do is basically move these edges in just a little bit so that they get to enjoy the, the, the nice shading that this thing created. Um, and right now it's just hanging over the edge. So using my scale tool, I'm just going to bring it in a tiny bit on both sides at the same time. And you'll see what that does is eliminate that seam because that's not there anymore. So anywhere you see a seam, you can just kind of just tuck it in a little and you'll see now all of a sudden, oh yeah, the shell is just tucked inside of the stuff that it created and then that's why I don't have that seam anymore. All right, so again, that's how you create the ambient occlusion pass and, and then neaten it up to make it look terrific. Um, again, this is great to do for your models. Any and all of your models you'd like to do that to, I recommend because it looks pretty neat.